Welcome or welcome back and thanks for joining me for this hopefully cozy little room makeover today and I'll also be answering some of the Q&A questions that I got in the comment section of the season finale of Asylum season 2. It is absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> So we're going to be redecorating Serena's room today. She just became a teenager and her favorite color is black. Her least favorite color is purple. So we got to change her room up. Just want to take a couple things from Alfie's room for her. Binoculars, maybe this stuffed animal. Serena loves animals, so we'll take this little dog painting. But other than that, I don't want to raid Alfie's room too much. <laughs> So these are Serena's interests. I have that mod that makes it so interests aren't locked to the age they are. So I remember when she was a kid, I re-rolled her interests a couple times to like try to make her interested in crime and politics. <laughs> and I at least got crime to three because like it's kind of crazy that like in a normal game, there are certain things kids like can't be interested in. Like I get it, but also at the same time, there are always like those kids who are hell into politics when they're little who are like, well, I was reading about Iran Contra the other day, and I'm like, tell me more. So just like with Alfie, I put Serena's personality points and interests into Sophie the Puffin's aspiration calculator, and was like, are you kidding me? Because she got Romance Sim, Knowledge Secondary, which is exactly what Alfie got, but whereas Alfie got Serial Romantic and Evil Scientist, Serena is a hopeless romantic and a good scientist. So I'm like, all right. And yeah, we can't forget that they both, as children, had the neurotic and brave trait. Um, but then the third one, Alfie, was evil and Serena was absent-minded. So I guess that's a pretty significant difference. But still, <laughs> the game just keeps insisting that they need to be these strange uh destined mirror images of each other i that's so crazy i didn't realize that she was also a gemini that makes sense then her and alfie are both whoa that's weird too because they're gemini's like it's like they're both twins and they're like these flips of each other like wow y'all we're getting deep and yeah at first i'd kind of been like oh maybe i should try to use the furniture she already has and like be realistic but then I was like, wait, she is a hopeless, romantic, kind of sad, goth girl. Her furniture has to be Adele, the queen of sad, dreamy, romantic, goth furniture in Sims 2. So we will be using a lot of Adele's fabulous creations and a lot of recolors by Leafstorm, Pineapple Forest, Lamps, um, and hopefully you should be able to find stuff all this stuff on my Pinterest, but if not, feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm happy to happy to track it down. We've gotten everything out of the way. We can start decorating and I will start answering um, some of the really awesome questions that you guys asked in the last video. Thank you so much. I'm excited. So let's get started. Um, also spoilers for the end of the season of Asylum season two, if that's something that you care about and you haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet, just, um, Oh, <laughs> warning about that. And so Annie Bats asked, what led up to you creating this channel and starting the Asylum Challenge? What was your thoughts on how it would develop when you first started out? And it sounds weird, but I honestly can't really remember. Like I've always loved playing Sims and I always would like set up shots I thought looked cool, but I never learned how to actually film my gameplay. And I've never really watched very much Sims content because my attention span sucks and it's hard for me to get immersed in it. I knew about the Asylum Challenge from back in the day, like on Mod The Sims, but I never played a challenge myself. And then I saw Cozy Pixels Asylum Challenge she played and they were really short and well edited. And I had fun watching those and that inspired me to try that specific challenge because it seemed fun and it didn't have a ton of complicated rules. like. A lot of other sims challenges do i filmed and edited a bunch of episodes and then they sat on a hard drive for months because i tend to be very perfectionist in a procrastination sense like i'm like no i can't upload them until i come up with the perfect 
channel name and before I do that I have to do XYZ other thing. And then someone in my life was like, okay, just promise to upload one in the next week. So I did, even though I was really nervous because I'm just, you know, I'm a lurker at heart. I'm always there watching and never participating. <laughs> so this is super different for me. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, I'm sorry. This is a really long ramble, but honestly, I don't really know. I think I just was like, I always thought I could make a funny series and I finally felt confident enough to do it. I hoped that maybe The Sims would be funny or a cool story would develop and I could continue to play with them outside of the challenge, but I had no idea I would get so into it and get into developing this big crazy story with machinimas and stuff. And then question two, uh, Cartoon Mouse asked, how much do you pre-plan for the story versus how much is determined by the Sims themselves, their wants, things they do autonomously? And I was really excited to answer this because this is something I feel like I always want to talk about because truly Sims 2 really blows my mind. Like, um, especially coming back to it, having not played it in a really long time. Like I absolutely was obsessed with it when I was like 14. I think coming back to Sims 2, especially like as an adult. And yeah, I have a lot of nostalgia that definitely helps me get into it for sure. But I I didn't remember it super well and I hadn't played it in like over a decade. And it really blows my mind how completely immersive it is and how charming it is and how smart and like real the Sims are. It kind of freaks me out sometimes because I swear like I really don't plan really much at all um and I didn't plan anything for a super super long time and then I got kind of overwhelmed because I was like shit I keep like hinting at this story and I haven't figured out like what it's gonna be <laughs> but so much of the time you don't need to because the sims just behave in ways that make sense or like it just feels like the story will just kind of create itself and so it's really fun and makes it like come alive it makes it fun for me and it like takes pressure off of me and uh hold on one second while i'm starting decorating here i kind of want to generate a secondary favorite color for serena just like as an accent color to help me wow okay and it's red <laughs> and alfie's favorite color is red oh my god all right <laughs> all right sorry for that but like all the characters all the sims like they feel real and like the animation too is so detailed and so beautiful that you really can like sit and watch them and and feel very immersed in a way that in like the later games you know i can't sit there and watch a sim cook and be like wow this is so amazing whereas like i can make an entire montage and like vibe out watching solange make a pie and it feels to me like she's doing it because she gets everything out and stirs it up makes it up puts it in the pan like all those little things add together like the animations and the way that the sims you know are like programmed to tr behave with each other like really makes it come alive to me and makes it so much fun so like certain things like i'll decide you know like really big overarching plot stuff like i'm like okay alfie and barrett are gonna like disappear you know that's something obviously that i decided but then i'll really just kind of give myself an outline of things that i need to happen and the rest like it fills in the blank and i'll sit in there and feel like in front of my computer just like yes yes because i'll just be like bro they can hear me dude they can hear me we're talking together like how do they always know just what to do like i'm trying to think of a specific example like like just how the things they'll be talking about in the thought bubbles will come up and it will be perfect with like what i'm saying at that time like because i don't really or really never i don't record gameplay and then go back and talk over it like it's always just me talking at that time um, with the exception of like if it's something for exposition I realize like I didn't explain who someone was or I didn't explain like why they went to a place I'll like you know record like oh time to go over to Letitia's house or whatever but I can remember I think in the first episode of season two when Blanche and Solange are like out at the restaurant and um, I'm trying to lead up to how Blanche wants Solange to go to Nolan's house. And so I'm just talking like she wants her to do a job for her downtown. And then they like start talking about downtown. And I'm like someone with like a lot of money. And then Blanche started talking about money at that time. And then I'm like, and maybe her greatest enemy in the world. And then right then she like talks in the punching glove uh, thought bubble came up. And I'm just like, bro, <laughs> I feel like it, it stays fun for me. And I get so invested in it because I... Um, 
do feel like I don't even have that big of a hand in it. And I still get to feel like it's this organic thing that's like happening partially because of me, but also partially because of just the game itself. And so that's really cool. <laughs> Sorry, that was an extremely long winded answer. And then I grouped these couple questions together. We had a small bear ask, which Sim has had your favorite storyline so far? Um, Sandwich asked, out of the household in season two, which one did you enjoy playing in, filming the most? And Stegosaurus asked, do you have any favorite characters except for Solange, of course. <laughs> um, and I mean, I love Groceries and Jonathan and Whitney. I think their story is very sweet, even though I guess it's pretty bad too <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I read comments where you guys really spell it out and I'm like, damn, all right, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make their lives terrible, but to me, they're pretty iconic and they always crack me up. And other favorite characters, I love Maximus. I love Nolan's entire god awful house. I love Letitia and Blanche. And I'm really excited to get to know all the kids more who are now growing into teens and stuff. What can I say? I love all my children equally. <laughs> Sandwich asks, is there any specific plot line or character you wish you had more time to flesh out in season two? I think I definitely could have shown a bit more red, but it took me so long to bring him back and I had so much stuff I had to do to make the season finale work that I didn't end up bringing him in until super late. But I'm also like lucky I didn't flesh him out or the circus or stuff like that more because there are a lot of questions that I'm still working through and trying to wait for inspiration on. <laughs> And then Sandwich also asked, in season one, you came up with backstories for why Solange and Red are in the asylum, Solange's life falling apart after skiing injury and Red's whole deal. Do you have any head cannons as for why the others have been hospitalized? It's funny, I was just thinking about this the other day. I definitely want to think of more backstories. I hope that something will give me some inspiration because I am intrigued by it and I feel like probably it would tie into the overarching plot well, so. I hope I can come up with some good ones. I hope some will like appear naturally to me in the game, like how Reds and Solange's did. And then Sandwich asked, are there any songs you associate with the series in general or any specific characters? What are you doing? I don't know if there's really a song I would associate with anyone. Well, except like, what's that song? Um, <laughs> You wacky, you wacky sax, yakety sax, or whatever it's called for every time we're at Nolan's house, just on an infinite loop over like all the footage. <laughs> and Helvella asked, if The Sims 2 had a built-in height adjuster and more body type options, how would you have made the Asylum cast differently? And it's funny, I never thought of it until your question. I guess because I just randomized all The Sims and used the Pooklip method to create them, which also was a question from Stegosaurus about if I use the Pooklet method. If anyone doesn't know, it's a really fun way to try to make unique Sims and I'll put a link about it in the description. So I randomized their appearances, I randomized their name on behind the name, I randomized all their interests and aspirations. So because of that, I think that their appearances ended up feeling pretty arbitrary to me. But after reading your comment, I do like the idea of Tall Blanche and I feel like Red's probably a short king. <laughs> And Jonathan's probably just like a big ass like Viking type dude, which is why he is able to get away with so much ridiculous behavior with women. I was also asked, did you have a least favorite character? I definitely don't think I had a least favorite, but near the end of the season, the Joubert's became really difficult just because I had certain story beats that I had to reach by certain points. And then I'd be like, ah, it's so much pressure. Like, I just want to play. Like, I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. Um, so compared to that, playing Nolan's family or Jonathan's family was so much fun and no pressure at all. It was always like, oh, amazing. Like a fun, ridiculous B plot. We can just see what happens. We can drink this lady. We can go to the ice skating rink, whatever. Um, and then um, a small bear asked which episode was your favorite to film and that ties into this like the pressure because by far my favorite episode to film i think was hot dog city or bad time in hot dog city episode 10 because like i always do this thing where i get ahead of myself and then i get bored like i thought of the circus and started building it like two episodes or something before it was introduced which means then i have to figure out how to introduce it and 
go back and get through that exposition and through that groundwork before I get to just like vibe again and like vibe in my circus. <laughs> and I did the same thing with Devil's Rock. I started building it like immediately after I finished the circus, which then meant introducing the circus was hard because I was like, no, I want to make Alien Town. So there were certain loose ends of the plot that I hadn't figured out yet and I was avoiding them because that stuff is hard. <laughs> and finally one morning I was just like sitting in bed and just brainstormed for 10 minutes like, okay, I gotta figure this out. I wrote a few paragraphs on my phone trying to answer some questions for myself and I liked what I came up with and I felt good about it. So then when I went to record in Nolan's house, it was so much fun because it was just gameplay, no pressure. I wasn't thinking about how I was gonna answer those plot questions anymore. My only responsibility was in some way I needed Blanche to show up with like some sort of money idea and I was kicking that can down the road like, oh, I'll figure it out. And then of course he helped me out being like, I'm gonna drink Opal. So I was like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> But then yeah, then the answers I came up with then lead to more questions that I still don't have answers to yet. So yeah, so then I kicked that can down the road more. <laughs> it's fun for me because the game helps and the game like leads me to the story as much as I get to like shape the story. And The Sims 2 has enough of that tongue in cheek and dark humor like of The Sims 1 that, that makes the story feel fun like to me. It, the story that starts to develop organically is interesting to me. And that also led up to um, Annie Bats asked, what led up to the switch into a Let's Play format and the gradual inclusion of machinima scenes and effects? Um, I feel like it was that as the story kind of developed in the game and in my mind, like I really want to make it real and I want to make it feel real and immersive. I always want to like capture the feeling of how big the game felt when you're younger and not even necessarily younger but like when you're really really i mean sims people know you know like when you're really in that sweet spot where you're super immersed like in a house that you're building or like the family you're living in it like i feel like a lot of people can relate because a lot of being a sims player is like chasing that feeling like making the next perfect family with the next perfect storyline you're gonna do or whatever and you're always kind of looking for like oh i want to be like super immersed in the game um, or at least for me, and I think other people can probably relate to that. And the story that was developing was pretty weird and detailed and not something I could do within the confines of gameplay. Like, the story isn't about Barrett becoming president or something, and I show the story by having him get to the top of the career. So, so I have to tell all the, like, overarching plot story myself. But then there's a limit to what just telling can do. Like, you know, I could sit there over normal gameplay and just be like, oh, by the way, this dude is undercover doing blah, blah, blah. But instead, I want to try to show you guys and make you believe it and make like, well, make us both believe it. And really, then it's more fun for me and hopefully more fun for you. Like creating the machinima parts, I feel like reinvests me in the story and like makes it more immersive and fun for me. Like, I think that honestly, in a lot of ways, it's funny because it's exhausting. So it depletes my energy to make the machinimas, but at the same time, it keeps the story engaging for me. And it makes me want to continue to flesh out the Sims because like then I get to watch the machinima parts back later and be like, okay, dude, this is dope. Like, damn, those are my dollies. <laughs> um, and like, I hadn't really thought about it until this past year, but I, when I was a kid, I used to always make videos. I had a little like digital blue camera that plugged into the computer. Before that, I would make stop motion animation videos of like my dollhouse. I used to love to like write. I used to try to like write little TV shows. So I don't know. I just sadly, for whatever reason, probably the internet and having access to it all the time and a smartphone, <laughs> as I grew up, I stopped engaging so much in those hobbies. But like once I started getting really into doing the machinima parts in this and getting really into like, ooh, the set design and then I'm gonna do the music and the lighting and what they're gonna say and like the voices, it like kind of became my own little TV show. And when I was younger, I used to always make little teen dramas with like, you know, dramatic music in my head, like imagining montages and stuff. So I think over time, like, it, it kind of just became that I feel like I'm making a little TV show and it feels less like making like a, I don't know, let's play or whatever. But at the same time, it's like completely free for me to do. It's low stress, low pressure, and it's just fun. But it kind of gets to capture that feeling of like creating a little show. So I definitely recommend, it's really fun. And then I'm so sorry. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this, um, but Obsmiet? Chuyuk? 
I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. I don't know why I decided I also needed to say it really high pitch and go over that. But um, they said, I recently rewatched your dorm speed build video and you mentioned something about connecting it to the asylum storyline. Just wondering if that's going to come back. And then I grouped this question with Sandwich's question about... So there are many cases of plot lines you never intended to make happen, happening because the Sims themselves have willed them to be. On the flip side, were there any plot lines that you really wanted to make happen, but the Sims decided they simply didn't vibe with your authorial intent? And so these are kind of related to me because back during season one, or like right after it ended, I can't really remember when I built the dorm, but I just, I really did not foresee at all that at the end of season two that Barrett and Alfie leave. Like that was not something I think I thought of till like halfway through season two. So at that time I just assumed, yeah, blah, blah, you know, Sims, the kids will grow up. And Alfie and Serena are pretty close in age. So maybe they'll go to college together probably and they can go to it in this town. And I got ahead of myself and started building it. And so with the dorm, it's like, well, they probably can't go to college there or if it did happen it would have to be after a bunch of other stuff happened so I guess spoiler alert kind of but not really because that was something that I just like did a year ago but I still really want to expand that town I've never really played university very much it's not an expansion pack I had when I was younger and so I do think it'd be fun and so those were definitely plot lines that like I kind of expected to make happen and wanted to happen and that just didn't and I feel like as for other plot lines that I wanted to happen like I would love if Lavinia would be into Solange, that would be great. <laughs> um, but clearly I did not make them very compatible because I just randomized her. So I don't know, you know, I'm not doing it on purpose. Just everyone is awful and no one appreciates her. And then the next questions um, were all about sort of the process of making the video. So I grouped those ones together. Um, uh, Grumpy Sphinx asked, I'm curious to know how you plan out the story scenes. Like, do you have sort of a script beforehand with a list of animations to use? Um, and then El Helvela uh, similarly asked, would you maybe make a tutorial on how you go about making machinimas or have tips and tricks you're willing to share? And then Bunny Wilder asked, how many hours does each video take you to make? I started out doing absolutely no planning at all for the story scenes. I think for the first, like the first ones I had to do, were I think in the episode after Alfie's birthday where Blanche has everyone hostage. I just took shots and said stuff over them and it turned out okay. So I was like, oh, okay, this is fine. But I quickly realized trying to figure it out in post really did not work when it came to a longer machinima like the Opal Jalowitz cow plant one. So after that, I started using a Google Doc while filming. So now I just scene by scene as I film, take like a minute to be like, okay, what should he say? What should he say? And then I'll pick an animation that I think captures the vibe of what I want them to say, or maybe the body language or the mouth movements has like the right cadence. And then these parts in blue are because later when I record the dialogue, usually the animation will be a little too long. So I'll add dialogue to the line to make it long enough for the animation. One way I've tried to be more efficient is I'll make a note like this, like a continuity note, like don't show that there's no plates there and that they're not eating or something because sometimes I'll be like, oh, I got this shot I needed. And then it's like, no, I didn't because I accidentally have her wearing the wrong outfit or something because I forgot. Whoops, can't show what's below. That is a big spoiler. And and then something I started doing more for like the ending episodes was making like these outlines of like shots that I knew that I needed. Um, and then in between you'll see like, I'll be like, okay, here's where I'll put my gameplay. And then I'd be like, here's what should happen before the next gameplay part. And then like stuff like this is part of what makes the game so fun. Like I knew I wanted Letitia in the backyard for the wolf thing, but I was like, but how is she gonna get outside? Cause they're locked inside. Like, I don't know how I'm gonna come up with a reason for that. I'll just figure it out. And then it turned out they were all just going through locked doors, like for whatever reason. So I was like, okay, cool, thanks game. Now it's like totally in line with the universe they're living in that apparently they can just go through locked doors right now for some reason. Um, and this originally just said like to get a snack with question marks and then she got the want to eat a grilled cheese and I was like, yes, perfect. Like I love when things in the gameplay line up with 
with what I think I need to do. So doing the outline definitely really, really helps and I'll definitely continue to do it in the future. But yeah, so it's all just dumped in this one Google Doc. It's not organized, especially compared to people who have entire spreadsheets just for like, here's whose baby is learning to walk and going to preschool and here's whose baby is working in the mines. I'm really inefficient and I almost never make notes to myself about specific animations like I really should and I try to. I'm getting better at it, but honestly, I mostly just sit there and try like 20 animations until I figure out one that I like. And so because of that, my videos take me an extremely long time. Like honestly, it's embarrassing. Like It's alarming. But I don't know, the gameplay itself might be like six hours because usually there's tons of pausing and I'm setting up shots and stuff. But then along with that, there'll be like five hours of machinima footage before it gets cut down. And then I'll spend like 40 minutes posing someone super specifically and then be like, eh, I don't like it and not use it. So the videos take a really long time, but I'm trying to be smarter about it. And I'm really happy to share tips about it. I actually um, have some shots and guides I've already kind of been assembling. I just have to edit them and add a bit more explanation, things like that. So it should be fun um, and I'll do my best to get it out pretty soon and then finally we have by the time season one wrapped up did you have a general idea of how everyone's lives were gonna unfold or was that more of you letting them do whatever their hearts desired or was it a mix of both um, that was sandwich and then stegosaurus asked what was your approach for the time jump did you go in with a plan of where you wanted everyone to end up did you go with the flow until it felt right for example did you know before starting to play them in smaller groups that blanche would eventually become an evil witch or that barrett and letitia would end up expanding their family by a third child with the time jump it honestly sounds crazy because again like I can't really remember. I think partly because I lost all my screenshots that I was taking, I never was able to construct a narrative of that time for myself. And so now looking back, it just feels really random. Like Solange got a random chance card that gave her 30 grand or something. And then I think she probably rolled the want to get a vacation home or go on vacation. And I was like, this gal deserves a break. She should just live in Three Lakes on an indefinite vacay. I definitely didn't think Blanche would become a witch until I think she just randomly met Timothy Wilson, the evil warlock downtown or something. And I was like, huh, never tried that before. And then Whitney, I moved into the asylum super fast because I was like, all right, Whit, baby, let's see what you got. And then she instantly, like the first hour she was there, got pregnant with groceries um, from Jonathan. And I was like, oh God, here we go. And I definitely did not know there would be a third Joubert child. Cyril was 100% an ACR baby. I think, yeah, a lot of that time was me just relaxing and decorating their houses and just watching them do whatever. It's mostly single sims on their own. And it was really fun to try to figure out what spot they should be at when we meet back up with them. But I was kind of trying to just feel it out and see what happened. Nolan was really fun to play during this time. Just living alone in this little house downtown, meeting Karen and... Oh, those innocent days. I think when season two started, it was more about when I felt excited and ready to devote the energy to it and less about a spot in their lives in the game that I got to. Because I just went into the season being like, all right, my only vague goal so far is that Blanche is going to ask Solange to help her bring Red back to life. And that was all that I had. So now I'm done decorating Serena's room and we can check it out. I really tried to use her favorite color, of course, Black, but I didn't want too much so I wanted her room to be kind of romantic and whimsical and I wanted to be sure to include lots of animals because she loves animals and also imagery kind of mysterious or maybe that hints at how now she maybe has this suspicion this interest in what happened to her sister so thank you guys again for all of your questions. And if you didn't ask a question, thank you anyway. It's always so awesome to see your guys' response to the videos. It really means a lot to me and I appreciate so much how patient you are with how long my <laughs> videos take. And it really means a lot to me that a lot of people uh, seem to enjoy them. So thanks so much for being here. And I'm really excited for what the future holds. And if I didn't answer your question in this one, I'm going to do another Q&A super, super soon because I rambled way too long in this video. And yeah, I guess this video will also give you the opportunity to see how truly painfully slow I decorate when it's not sped up for its speed build. But hopefully pretty soon we'll be back here at the Joubert household to see what becomes of our pals. In the meantime, I will enjoy taking a little break from all of their kookiness. <laughs> oh yeah, and if you guys really want to know 
the truth of how disorganized I am. Um, I realized like right after finishing the season finale that Barrett and Letitia were never married, which I didn't know. Because I guess maybe originally I was going to like do a wedding episode for them. But yeah, so they were never married. So I had them get married right before moving Barrett to the desert. So now it also looks really sketch. Like it looks like Letitia was in on his plan. Like, ma'am, please explain why your marriage certificate is signed after your husband died in a mysterious event of his own creation. Oh my God, should now be the time that I finally remember to put the ground overlays from the lush terrain set over the ground. Okay, I'm gonna do it so that never again will I upload a video and then be like, oh my god, I still forgot to put the ground overlays on the street so that it matches the rest. <laughs> Look at me go! I'm doing better already. <laughs> so thanks you guys so much again for hanging out with me today while I rambled and decorated and I hope it was enjoyable. I hope you're all doing super great and I'm excited to talk to you again soon. See you next time.